Have you ever had a friend, a family member, a partner, a coworker who's a narcissist or who suffers from narcissistic personality disorder or NPD? Chances are you have been the victim of gaslighting, which is a manipulation technique that these types often employ to get what they want. Now, just in case you're new around here, let me really quickly define for you what gaslighting is. Used by most narcissists, this is a technique that is pervasive and highly effective. It's meant to manipulate you by psychological means into questioning your own sanity. Or in layman's terms, what that means is gaslighting is when a toxic person intentionally messes with your head to make you doubt your sanity and your reality. And if you haven't already guessed it, gaslighters make you feel crazy because they act like your reactions to their abuse aren't normal or irrational. But is it intentional? Are narcissists and other toxic people using gaslighting on purpose? Do they think about it first or is it just part of their nature? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today at queenbeing.com. I'll offer you examples of gaslighting and we're going to talk about whether or not it's an intentional behavior. And be sure to stay to the end of the video where I'm going to give you tips on how to deal with it if it is happening to you. So let's get started. Imagine this, you're having a discussion with a friend, let's call him Ben. You're upset with Ben because he invited you to spend the weekend at his condo on the beach. But while you're en route from three states away, he made a new friend and invited that friend to stay at the condo too. Now this bothers you because Ben gave the new friend your room. And now you've either got a bunk on the couch or pay for a hotel and to be honest, neither is really a good option for you. When you arrive and you hear the news, Ben says, well, I, I didn't want to make the other guy feel bad. I didn't want him to think I didn't care about his comfort. Of course, you're going to feel upset by this because as Ben's oldest friend, you kind of feel like his concern and his loyalty should really lie with you first, especially given that you had a pre-existing invitation to use the room. When you express your feelings to Ben, he acts shocked and he recoils, telling you to stop acting so crazy and to settle down, quit overreacting. Well, before you know it, you're apologizing and you're begging to sleep on Ben's lumpy couch. And of course, poor Ben, he's so angry, he can't even look at you because you just totally went off on him for no reason. He was just trying to help you out, man. Later, you find out that he's been telling everyone how crazy and out of control you got. You're dumbfounded, you're crushed, you're hurt and confused. And the next day, you start to question yourself. Hmm, maybe you did overreact. Maybe Ben had a point. Maybe you were a little out of control. Does this situation sound familiar? This is one concrete example of exactly how gaslighting works. Let's break down this conversation just a little bit to make some important points. First, Ben makes a promise to you that you can stay in his guest room on the beach for the weekend. After you commit and you're on your way to the visit, Ben invites a perfect stranger to take the room and puts you in a really uncomfortable position by not even asking if it would bother you. When you confront Ben with your feelings, no matter how carefully, he twists your words and he gets all upset you naturally find yourself getting emotional first because you're shocked that he's being so rude and disrespectful and second because you're hurt and you're angry that he can't see why he's wrong ben turns it around on you and he brushes aside his disrespect and blatant disregard for you and he focuses on the fact that you yelled at him when you responded to his abusive treatment in reality you started feeling offended righteously so and you started talking faster than usual well, you end up apologizing and feeling guilty somehow, even though you know he's the one who caused the problem. Ben spreads lies about you in order to reinforce his attempt to control and manipulate you. Then other people start to give you funny looks and whisper about you. Now you're beginning to doubt yourself and you're starting to think maybe you're the crazy one. Well, guess what, my friend? This is an example of how it feels to be successfully gaslighted by a very toxic narcissist. When it comes to being in any type of relationship with a narcissist, whether it's your ex, a friend, a parent, or whatever, gaslighting is a common tactic that the narcissist uses to manipulate you. Now, this isn't just narcissists. Other types of abusers, such as heads of cults and dictators, well, they gaslight others for the purpose of controlling them as well. And one of the ways they do this is by utilizing these gaslighting tactics that cause them to question their sanity, which is, of course, the definition of gaslighting. Here's another example for you. Let's talk about Tom and Ava. Tom is a raging narcissist married to Ava. Fortunately, Ava has figured this out and she's been attempting to stop falling for the gaslighting tricks that make her feel so crazy. She's been employing the gray rock method and he's not loving it. He's kind of hating it. He's always trying to figure out ways to keep her feeling insecure and uncomfortable in their relationship. 
For example, he knows it bothers her when he makes it clear that he's attracted to other women. So one night after he particularly fails to make her feel crazy all day, Tom takes his manipulation up a notch, tells a story about a hot girl he met at the gas station on his way home. He tells Ava how the girl practically got naked in front of him. All of this is a lie, of course. And he goes into what he would have done had he been single. Ava quickly realizes what he's trying to do and she remains quiet to avoid his inevitable claims that she's always finding something to complain about and that she should just blindly trust him, that he'd never do anything to hurt her despite the fact that he verbally abuses her every single day. Well, now this is where it gets scary, see? Because when Tom notices that Ava isn't giving him the supply that he wants, the supply he's looking for, again, he takes it up a notch and he claims he can sense that she's upset, even though she literally showed no signs of it. So eventually he manages to draw her into the argument and of course she's left reeling. She can't believe he's done this again. But this is how a narcissist works. A narcissist consistently and systematically tears down their victims, forcing them into these predefined roles, which of course the narcissist themselves defines. These roles place the narcissist in a position of power while you struggle to prove yourself to them in some way. Does that situation sound familiar to you? If so, of course, you're dealing with gaslighting and you might just be involved with a narcissist. But don't feel bad because even the most intelligent people can fall victim to the manipulation of a narcissist. Now the question you might be asking yourself is, do people who are utilizing gaslighting tactics really even know that they're doing that? Can gaslighting be unintentional? Well, in the examples I gave, do you think that gaslighting was done on purpose there or was it by nature? Were those narcissists that I talked about calculating or is that just the way their minds work? Well, let's discuss that. It could go one of two ways. In some cases, yeah, a narcissist can be well aware of what they're doing. Maybe they don't call it gaslighting, but they have studied you and they have long practiced the strategy and they know it works in order to manipulate you and other people. It's all about gaining control. The ones who do intentionally manipulate and the ones who do so in a calculated, focused way tend to be more intelligent as well as higher on the cluster B spectrum. So that means they're more likely to qualify as sociopaths or psychopaths. However, in some cases, there are narcissists and other toxic types who utilize gaslighting tactics without even realizing it. In those cases, they are still wanting to gain control and to manipulate other people. And when that happens, gaslighting is one of those things that they use. That doesn't mean the gaslighting is intentional though. It just kind of comes with the territory. In many cases, children who were raised by narcissistic parents or one narcissistic parent would have learned those tactics along the way by just kind of being around that person and soaking it in, kind of watching what the parent does. It can just be their nature or a learned behavior. It might look a lot like a bad habit. For instance, if the parent had an addiction and they didn't want the child to tell anyone about it, well, they might use gaslighting to keep them quiet. This could involve some sort of manipulation by the parent or a number of things. Another common gaslighting tactic that toxic parents use is to alienate the child from the other parent. This is especially true when parents are separated or divorced, but not always. They will depict the parent as a deadbeat or a loser, even if that's far from the truth. The worst part is that oftentimes children who are abused and manipulated in this way will sadly repeat history. Some realize they need to break the cycle, so they don't do that to their children. And this, of course, is my goal for us here. We don't want the toxic legacy to continue in our families, right? But those who do pick up those tactics are more likely to be manipulative toward other people, even when they're doing so unintentionally. And this sometimes does include gaslighting. They're still doing it to get what they want, don't get me wrong. And whether or not they are aware of the gaslighting, it's still a pathological way of cruelly manipulating the mind of other people to get what they want. And of course, they don't care if you get hurt in the end. They don't have empathy. Bottom line, it is true that gaslighting can be unintentional. But remember this, that doesn't make it any less problematic than those who are intentionally doing it to you. The best way to deal with gaslighting is through the Grey Rock Method. So I'm going to attach part of a previous video for you right now where I explain exactly how to effectively and safely use the Grey Rock Method. And then I'll be right back to see you after that. And we'll wrap up and check in with the question of the day. So I'm going to quickly define for you what the Grey Rock Method is because it truly is the very best way to deal with a narcissist who is gaslighting you if you are not able to get away from that person and go no contact. Such as in one of the situations I just described, or if you're in a situation where you have to kind of, you know, get your eggs in a row before you're able to leave. And while you're planning to leave or while you're preparing to leave, you can use the Grey Rock Method to get through those days or months. And the idea of it is that you use this in order to encourage the narcissist to kind of lose interest in you. And what that means is that as you're going through the process of being gaslighted, 
rather than reacting the way you might normally react when they say twist a fact or name call or mess with your head, you recognize what they're doing as gaslighting and then you don't respond or react to it at all. You simply go, oh, that's, that's interesting. So if normally you would scream and act crazy or you would cry or you would throw things, don't do any of those things anymore. Just go, oh, mm -hmm. okay, I see you. Or nothing. You can say nothing. Now you're not trying to avoid contact with this person, but anytime they're coming at you with some manipulation or some name calling or games or anything like that, you don't give them what they want, which is your emotional energy. Because in some ways, these people are kind of like vampires when it comes to emotional energy. They want what you got. They want all of it because they need it to survive. It's called narcissistic supply. All right, now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you been through gaslighting and do you believe it's intentional or unintentional? And have you tried the gray rock method and did it work for you? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you here and here. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.